Malazan. What is it? Chances are that you already know, having clicked on this video and all, but if you somehow stumbled here by accident, here's the gist. Malazan is a series of books by authors Steven Erickson and Ian C. Asselmott. It is epic fantasy in the truest sense of that word. The books cover spans of hundreds of thousands of years, numerous continents and follow more characters than you can remember. Which brings me to my next point. If you heard about Malazan, you likely heard the words dense, difficult or unapproachable in the same sentence. So, is this true? Yes. No. Let me put it this way. Malazan is the Dark Souls of fantasy books. Now that that's out of the way, let me put it in a less obnoxious way. Starting the book can be difficult. You are thrown in, with no hand-holding at all, and told to figure it out. And you know what? You will. It's perfectly fine to be confused. The more time you spend in the world, the clearer it will become. And what kind of world is it, you ask? It's big. But never overwhelmingly so. One book will focus on a few locations, and while the next book might throw you in a completely different location with new characters, the cast is never too big to lose track. The whole mess started when Ericsson and Esselmott met and found that they were both massive nerds. This led to them doing some tabletop roleplaying, which spiraled out of control and ended up in 29 books and counting. This world feels alive, with a rich and detailed history. If you dove into fantasy before and found them a bit too simple or handholdy, this might be right up your alley. Another thing that's refreshing is that the world is high magic. I'm talking dragons, people who can turn into dragons, or a wolf, a tiger, a bunch of rats, spiders and so on, wizards who can throw spells with powers of nuclear bombs, castles in the sky, a mad homicidal wizard in a body of a small straw puppet. The magic is so powerful and complex that I suspect Ericsson himself doesn't understand it. Apart from the real world, there are also the Warrens. They are these different realms with their own rules and powers. Think the ways in The Wheel of Time, or Shazmar in Stormlight, or the Nether in Minecraft. Some can be used as shortcuts across the world, some are frozen, some are on fire, most extremely deadly, and some of them house gods. Speaking of gods, we've got an abundance of them. Think of ancient Greece or Rome, the gods are just as egocentrically slimy and evil as people. They fight for power, often using unsuspecting humans in their games. Some hiding among humans, and some are pretty alright. Now all that sounds cool, but it's all just set up. It can't really work without... There are so many of them, you're guaranteed to find somebody you love. Apart from human beings, you got the ancient races. Big reptiles, the undead, 10 feet tall hulks of pure rage and destruction, cute little monkeys with wings, and so on. There is plenty of variety, that's for sure. As for the characters themselves, they are nuanced. Ericsson does an amazing job at characterization, making you understand and empathize with them. There are some people who disagree, and that's fine. They don't fit the mold of standard fantasy characters. They make mistakes, they are severely flawed, they think one thing but do another. Most of them are just as confused and lost in this world as you are. They will suffer. Your favorite character will probably die, or meet an even worse fate, but... They are kind people in this world, strong bonds of friendship and brotherhood, love and companionship, and most of all, compassion. And for the most part, there are no good or bad people here. We follow characters on both sides of the... So I can't say much here without getting into spoilers. If you want to go in completely blind, skip this part. Okay? Okay. Let me set the scene. The Malazan Empire, recently under new rule, is expanding. On the side of the Empire, we follow a ragtag group of soldiers, their new captain who bit off more than he can chew, a little girl possessed by an assassin god, and an overpowered three-century-old sorceress. On the other side, a found family of misfits, including a thief, a disgraced nobleman, an assassin, an old alchemist who knows more than he's letting on, and a fat bumbling idiot who is the smartest and best character in all of literature. As we follow both sides, it becomes apparent that things aren't as simple as they first appear. And there are layers upon layers of schemes, conspiracies and plans. This is only the first book in the series. The next one introduces a lot of new people and has only a handful of recurring characters. So while it might suck to get attached to one of them and then not see them for the following three books, it's unlikely that you won't find anyone you like in any given book. There are a lot to pick from. Speaking of, let's get back to the learning curve for a moment. Ericsson trusts his readers. He trusts you. Are you going to let him down? Betray that trust? No, you can do it. You'll figure everything out. 
Sure, you might need to flip back some pages to check something several times, but it's immensely satisfying when the pieces of the puzzle start falling into place. There are a lot of plot points, so maybe consider marking the things that sound important or taking down some notes. The main point I'm trying to make is don't be intimidated by it. You'll be fine. You'll understand everything you need to when the time comes, so just sit back and enjoy the ride. The writing style itself is pretty simple to grasp. Great prose without being too flowery. So, while you won't be confused by that, there are some technical terms, especially military ones, that not everybody understands. Another part of the writing that I don't hear a lot of people talk about is the humor. Yeah, it's a dark world, yes, people will get horribly tortured and killed, but some of the exchanges between the characters were hilarious. Whether it be an undead who doesn't understand humor, an out-of-touch immortal failing to understand the most mundane things, or a world-hopping trading caravan that would be right at home in this world. The darkness of the world is well balanced with plenty of light-hearted moments. So, where to start, you ask? Well, the main series consists of Gardens of the Moon, Deathhouse Gates, Memories of Ice, House of Chains, Midnight Tides, The Bone Hunters, Reaper's Gale, Told Hounds, Dust of Dreams, and The Crippled God. Then you have the Gurkhanas trilogy, a prequel following some characters and a pretty significant event that was touched upon in the Book of the Fallen. Path to Ascendancy, another prequel series following some characters we know and love. The Witness trilogy, taking place after the events of the main series. Six standalone novels and a series of seven novellas. There. Now, the agreed-upon reading order is getting through the main 10 books, then picking whatever you want after that. You can also go by publication order, which will place the prequel novellas between book 3 and 4, a spin-off novel and another novella between 5 and 6, and so on. You might hear some people online who suggest reading the books chronologically, and those people are wrong. Do not listen to them. Do not read it like that, this is a threat! So, hope that's all you need to know. Go read Malazan.